Hey y'all, welcome. I am the Astro Adventurer, aka my actual name is Cody, and I wanted to do this quick video for you all as a tutorial on how to process your astrophotography pictures or how I process uh, my astrophotography pictures. So I took some pictures last night that I did of uh, M81 Bodes and the Cigar Galaxy as well. And so I'm going to take you through that uh, really quickly and just show you my process. I'm not telling you and saying that this is how everyone does it, but this is what I'm comfortable with doing. This is how I've been processing mine, um, and this is how I've been producing the pictures that you see on my Facebook and some of the ones on my YouTube and everything as well. So I'm going to show you start to finish on how to process um, my photos. So let's uh, just take it away right now. I'm just going to go and start out here. I, I take my little flash drive uh, SD memory card from my ASI Air, and I put it in a little adapter, plug it into my USB-C port, and I come in here and just open up the photos. And the first thing we're going to do is review the photos that I took last night to make sure we're not going to be processing stacking ones that don't look good, right? So just come in here. I shot them in the live area. And we go in the lights. And then M81, that is, uh, I went between Bodes. That's Bodes, technically Bodes Galaxy. But um, I put it in the middle, uh, lined it so the Cigar Galaxy is in view too. And so we're just going to open up the pictures in the ASI uh, FITS viewer. So these come in as FITS files when they come here. And it, when they come off of my uh, ASI Air into the hard drive, there is FITS files. So we're going to go ahead and review these. I think the first couple um, were of just Bodes. I was doing some test photos. So we're not going to stack those because I think I want to mainly just do the uh, the ones I took of Bodes and the Cigar Galaxy. So let's make, uh, we don't have the right date. Those are other ones I took. Here are the ones I took last night. Here we go. Yeah, started at, looks like 10 o'clock, I believe. So let's make sure we've got those all set up and let's open them up here. There we go. That's what we're looking for now. So I'm mainly looking and going through here, making sure the stars look pretty good. There aren't any satellites or anything going through here and uh, kind of obstructing the view, if you will. So I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. This one looks pretty good. Um, go through these. Yeah, so far, so good. So you have Bodes right here, and then that Cigar Galaxy over there. It's one of my favorite targets, especially during Galaxy season. I've only actually, I've ever caught it on an 80 millimeter scope before, so I, this was the first time I was using my new Celestron C8, and this was at a focal length of about 1,280, right around there. So 1,280. So, so far these look good. I, I tracked really well last night, so I was hoping these pictures would uh, turn out pretty well. So just give me a second, we're gonna go through. I did take a fair amount of pictures last night, so this might take a second, so I am gonna zoom over uh, through these. So just bear with me. Yeah, so far everything looks good. And you can do this a little bit on uh, the SIR app too, as you're going through there as it's taking the pictures, it's super easy. You can select multiple ones if a bunch of them were bad. like. It was still taking pictures at the end there at like 7.30 when I finally brought the telescope in. So as you can imagine, it was kind of light out. So I had to delete all those pictures. But yeah, so far so good. There was The moon was out a little bit last night. Of, well, I think 40 some percent illumination. So some of these aren't maybe going to be as detailed as the ones that come in later at night as well. So just bear with me as we're kind of going through these. Um, but yeah, the guiding was really good. I was guiding on my advanced uh, Celestron Advanced VX mount uh, anywhere between 0 0.035 to, uh, I'm sorry, no, 0 0.35 to uh, 0 0.75 last night. So really good guiding. I was very surprised. Everyone says this mount is, oh, it doesn't guide well. You can't put that much. There's a lot of backlash. You can't put that much weight on there. Uh, even the C8 is like too much for it. And I haven't experienced that. My, mine have been really good. Um, my results so far. Uh, so, so you see here how this flips. This was um, when we're changing over through the meridian flip, they call it. So going on the other side of the pier or the other side of the tripod, if you will. And just one thing to note here, if you are using the ASI Air, you cannot leave this in live mode. It, it will not do the flip. Trust me, I've, I've learned this the hard way where I woke it up at like three o'clock in the morning and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm no longer taking pictures or not taking pictures of my original target. It's not guiding anymore. 
you basically you have to put it in auto run to be able to do the uh, pure flip. So um, to be able to do the viridian flip and, and continue guiding after that. So if you are going to be doing this, make sure you uh, if you are wanting to use live, make sure you turn it off and go to auto run before you go to bed. Live's kind of fun because it shows you the stacking as it goes along. Yeah, I love it, but. Yeah, you might want to uh, do auto run. You definitely want to, because I, I've I found out the hard way that <laughs> in wasted an hour or two of imaging last night. I lost an hour because I fell asleep when I was watching it, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, we're almost through these. I think we have maybe like 40 more to go from last night's session. So just bear with me for a second. So far, I mean, I don't. Like, I'm not going to throw any of these out. Every once in a while, if I, something looks a little weird, I'll zoom in. But the stars look, I'm really decent to me. Oh, that one. Let's look at that one again. No, I think it's fine, yeah. Yeah, really good guiding last night. The viewing was, I would say, good, especially after the moon went down, which was around 3 o'clock. Well, maybe 3.30 last night. Yeah, around 3.30 it was going down. And interesting, last night also was the moon and Mars conjunction. So moon and Mars were close to each other. Weren't exactly as close as I uh, thought they were going to be, though. I wasn't able to fit them in with my uh, Celestron C8. Unfortunately, uh, just too close of a zoom there. But I did take uh, pictures of the moon, videos of the moon, and a video of Mars as well. So I might show you how I process my planetary pictures after this. It, it's a completely different process than processing like Galaxy and Nebula deep sky photos. Very different process. So give me a second here. Just finish it up. Almost done. Yeah, all these look really good. That one might have moved a little bit. Let's take a look. No, no, it's fine. And I can't believe I'm not going to have to throw out like any of these photos, which is good. Now, yeah, see, there's a little streak across that one. Mm, yeah, probably don't want to stack that one, so I'm going to delete that photo. So, fear we come across one eventually. And then another one right there. So yeah, delete that one as well. So uh, it's only a couple photos. So that's not too bad. It was a pretty good night. That's pretty faint. I don't think I'll leave that. I don't think that'll come out in the processing. But we'll see. We can always remove it later. All right, we're nearing on the end here. I think. Well, that one was a little bit darker, but I might leave that. I think it might be okay. Pretty light. Like I'm saying, I'm just looking at those really dark streaks. I'll, I'll stack them. If they come out in the end product, we'll, we can always restack. It doesn't take that long. Another one there. All right. Should be nearing the end. I think, yeah, say, okay. I'm going to delete these because we're not getting as much detail as you can see I think we we're getting lighter yeah it's getting lighter out so let's delete these so we don't want to stack them all right and those are the ones I took a long time ago with my 80 millimeter refractor yeah I think I'm going to delete I'm going to delete those last two as well because there's not enough data all right so now that we've gone through all of that I'm going to come over here, and this is how I do it. I actually use uh, a couple different pieces of software. Now, you don't have to use these same software. This is what works for me. I really like starting out and stacking an Astro uh, Pixel Processor, or APP. It's also known as that. And I just, I love this software. It does a phenomenal job at, uh, at stacking. And it, it makes it so easy to follow along and understand, and then remove light pollution at the end, which we're going to need to do because of the, the moon. So... Come in here and make sure we do a force Bayer and X trans here. That's just going to make sure that the, even though we shot it with a color camera, when the fits co uh, files come in off of the camera and off the ASIR, they are um, pretty much in a, like a grayscale or a black and white. So you're going to have to like force Bayer it. Um, so what's which means adding a color layer like an RGB color layer, red, green, blue, to add uh, process them and 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 uh, show the color that's in the data, in the FITS file data. So we're going to name this M81, um, and we're going to do uh, last night, three, I, well, let's do today's date, because we're taking them overnight, 29 and 23. So and then we're coming here, and we're going to find our lights. So go back 
this. I air yeah, live lights M81, and then just change this to fits because there's going to be some JPEGs and all stuff in there too. All right, just scroll down here. Everything that was taken pretty much in 329 and 328 as well. We got some good data on this, it looks like. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to do the ones in 326 as well. Um, but I'm going to, I'll show you how I do that. That's going to be in a different session. So, um, so basically, press open. Okay. And we're going to choose uh, session one because we are going to do two sessions um, with the ones from the previous night as well that I took. All right, it's 107 because we'd have to delete a few. And that each one of these exposures is 180 seconds as well. So let's add uh, those other ones from, again, select fits files, uh, the other ones from the previous night that I had taken. I just took a few, but it was really good seeing out there, and I'm going to try to combine the data. So we'll do those four photos. Those were taken, uh, each one was a five-minute exposure, so we're actually adding, even though it's only four photos, we're actually adding 20 minutes of data, and they were really, really good ones too. So. Open that up, select session two. That was the one taken on the, the previous night. So we're nice. We have 111 altogether. Um, so this is pretty good. And 111 times basically three minutes at, for each one of those. Um, so looking at a lot of good data, you know, sitting around like six hours. So next we come in here. Don't need to do anything with calibrate. Go to analyze stars. Just, just checking to see how many stars are in the field of view for each one of those. So we're going to go ahead and analyze the stars there. Now this process does take a little bit of time, um, not nearly as long as like the integration piece, but you'll see it, it's just going to depend on your computer with how long this takes. All right, so I'm going to let this process and I'll be right back with you. All right, I'm back here. We're done analyzing the stars, so I'm just going to go in here, and the next step, it looks, it looks, we can check it too. It looks like we got, I don't know, between three and 400 some stars in each one. That's, that's pretty decent. And next step is to go to register. See, it just makes it easier. It's so easy. It tells you one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, what steps to go through. So that's why I like APP. It's super easy to understand to follow along. So next we're going to do the star, um, the registration of the stars. I don't mess any, mess around with anything here. Uh, the only time I would is if I was processing a comet and you have to select like the nucleus of the comet because the comet is moving at a different speed than the rest of the stars in the sky. So right now we're just going to leave everything on normal because we're just processing a normal deep sky image we're not doing a comet or anything like that so start registration now the registration piece does not take very long so just give it a quick second here to load i don't have to fast forward this part which is nice and then we'll move on to the the final step of stacking which is integration and the stacking of the photos which does take a while so all right that gong tells us we're done so then we go into uh, number five. You don't have to do you can you can do the normalizing right now, but I, it does it automatically in the uh, integrate piece. It just normalizes the background, straightens everything out. But yeah, you don't have to mess around with anything there either. So then we go to the integrate piece. Now um, again, integration is the same. We're just doing a normal deep sky image integration. See, it just it has everything just so well lined up and so easy to use. So I'm going to go ahead and press integrate. And this is going to take a while, so I, after this starts, I will be back with you in a little, a little bit. So stay tuned. All right, we're back here. Finally finished up with the integration, the stacking of the images. So now we uh, have our stacked image here, and as you can see there's a little bit of movement, um, and that's because I did two sessions, you know, you're never 100% aligned when you're doing these, especially when you do it over multiple sessions like I did. You get as close as you can, but like I said, APP uh, does a really good job at aligning everything and stacking it. So I, I'm pleased with this. Uh, you know, we're going to have to do obviously some, you know, cropping here, but 
I think it's it's nothing we can't deal with. So I'm going to leave it how it is. I, mean, I could go back and, and take out the other day's um, you know, uh, session in there, but I just don't want to lose that data because there's some really good data in there. So you might be looking at this and like, oh, man, that looks like crap. And yeah, you're pretty much right. <laughs> there's a lot we still need to do with this. But um, the next step we're actually going to do is remove some of the light pollution. And I do this right in APP still. And I, I actually just recently I've been starting, it does an automatic stretch for me, which means like stretching the curves and everything to reveal more of the data. It kind of make, puts it in a way that our eyes perceive and see uh, information and data. The camera doesn't do that automatically, so it does this in the, in the software for you. It usually does a 15%. I've been going down to a, uh, a 10% lately, um, still the three sigma, two and a half percent base. And I find this a little bit more of a manageable stretch a lot of times and I have to remove a little bit less of the light pollution too. So as you can see, it's not quite as bright, but I still like this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just save our original image here because I always like to save it as we go along in case I screw something up, right? So um, go down here. I like to save it in 2000 DPI. Um, yeah, I think it does a little bit better quality. So this is the original one. It's going to take a second to save. And I'm also going to save one with the 15% stretch just for the heck of it, just so we have it on there. So let's do the three sigma 15% stretch here and save that too. So then we can process both and see which one comes out better, but I'm just going to do the 10% for now. Because like I said, I've been having a little bit... Oh, well, yeah, I just overrided it. So I'm going to have to save the other one again. I forgot to use the same name there. So let's go back to 10 and 2.5%. Save again, and we'll just uh, name this 10%. So we know which one's which, right? 2000 again. And just so you guys know, um, you all know that it, that stacking the integration took probably about 20 minutes. It's not too bad. And that was a hundred some pictures. So a lot faster than like if you're using Deep Sky Stacker, which can take hours, like a, or three, four hours sometimes, and <laughs> maybe longer depending on your computer. And I have a pretty powerful computer here. I'm running, uh, it's a six core uh, i5 8600K uh, CPU overclocked to like 4.8 gigahertz. Um, so it's a, the CPU is a little bit older, but my GPU is, you know, uh, RTX 2800. Um, so it's, you know, pretty pretty decent power there. So you, your, your times might, might vary a little bit. All right, so next step, we're gonna go in here to tools and to remove light pollution. And this is gonna, remove some of the light pollution from just like the normal city skies and from the moon and all that. And this is a little bit more labor intensive, if you will. You do also, you do have to automatically drag and select these boxes where you want to remove the light pollution. And it, it does like, it calculates like an algorithm. So you can come in here and do this slowly, um, which I would recommend starting out. I don't usually do that anymore, but I'll show you the safer route to go, I guess, right? So we'll go ahead and, and we'll just select maybe um, 25, 30 boxes to start out with. And we're just selecting kind of the main image. So let's let it, uh, you press the recalculate button to kind of start calculating what the light pollution profile looks like, right? So it's going to do a bunch of calculations. It doesn't take too long. And you'll see it start removing some of that light pollution. See, got a little better. Um, but I'm going to come here and I'm going to make it even more extreme. You don't have to do this, but I really uh, I think it makes it easier for the processing later for how I do everything. So I'll go in here and select boxes um, just all around it. You don't want to select on your nebulos nebulosity if you're doing a nebula picture or over your galaxy. And if you do, it usually will show up like red right here if it doesn't think you should be um, selecting that area. So it tries to help you a little bit. I mean, there's some images where I'll select, oh man, maybe 200 plus boxes. Obviously, you don't have to go that extreme. I'm a little bit ridiculous. Um, but for the sake of this, I don't think we're going to do anything near that. And I avoid selecting the vignetting you'll see on the side. So that's what you see there is a vignetting. Um, listen, there's some ways you can get rid of that. I'll show you in a second when we go to Photoshop next. Um, basically, why we have a lot of that. It's partially because of the internal like sizes of the adapters I'm using with the camera and the mirror, but also because um, 
I didn't use any calibration frames. And I'm not saying you shouldn't use any calibration frames. I've gotten a little bit lazy here and there. And calibration frames, I mean like darks and flats and bias or flat darks. My camera that I use, the 2600 MC Pro, I just find I don't really need them that much and they don't make a huge difference. And I can remove this vignetting that you see here on the sides and post-processing like super easy. So yes, it is the lazier way to do it. I'm not saying that's how you should do it, but um, it's just one option and one way to do it. And um, you can always you know, do the traditional route and integrate the uh, flat starks and biases right here when you're stacking under calibration frames and it's super easy to do So let's let's try this out. Let's see what it looks like. I think we've Selected a lot of good areas. I'm gonna avoid the center for right now I, I might do that later and let's uh, recalculate. We've selected 124 areas. So that should be enough I'd say so give that a second it Won't take too long to process here and you should see again it darkening up a bit and removing more of that uh, light light pollution like I said, start small, build up from there. Um, you can remove like the, the red and the yellow here because that's showing like, oh, that's not really light pollution or it doesn't think that's light pollution. You will see a little bit more of those red and, and uh, yellow boxes kind of pop up here too. Uh, see, it got a little bit darker. I, I'm, I'm pretty, ple pretty pleased with that. I'd say it looks, looks good. We got some good detail and everything in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and press okay and save. We can always go back later if we want to remove more if it's not coming out how we want. So we're going to... I got a dong again. That's obnoxious, but it's great. Um, we're going to save this again as well. Again, I just picked 2000 DPI. I don't think this makes much of a difference. And then uh, I just put no light pollution. Is what I usually name this. Now, is there some low pollution still? Yes, of course, but... Give that a second. It's going to save it as a TIFF file. And then uh, next, we're going to be exiting out of APP here. Uh, that's basically all I wanted to show you in that one. And we're transitioning into Photoshop. So let's exit out of here. Yep. And go over here and we're going to uh, go to our file. Let me just save it, which is under uh, the E drive. I know where mine is. Obviously, I have several different hard drives here. And uh, it saves an astropixel processor, APP saves. And yes, I probably should create different folders for each one. I'm probably going to. I'm sure this drives some of you all crazy. But I will. Uh, I usually have to process these pretty quickly, like before work starts and stuff. So it might look a little bit crazy in here right now. But we're just going to look for M81. We can also search for it and see what we come up with. All right. Here we go. I think, yeah, this is from our session the other day. You'll see I did one where I processed like those four pictures I took on the 26, but now we integrated those into here. And yeah, that's one with no light pollution. So we're going to go over here, open with, and then uh, Adobe Photoshop. So this is the interesting part. Uh, we're going to do kind of something uh, that's almost like creating a fake flat frame or dark frames, if you will, and we're going to subtract that light pollution from the, the background. I learned this process, I believe, from Nebula Photos. Great resource, by the way, on YouTube, uh, him and Astro Backyard. They have some awesome tutorials as well. So huge shout out to them. I learned a lot of my stuff from here. And so, yeah, we're, we're, I'm going to show you how to do this. It's a really interesting process. So we're going to go in here. Um, first things first is we're going to do some cropping because you know, remove some of those overlap frames that we see in here. Um, and be careful because you don't want to remove too much because we do have some parts of the galaxy right in there that we don't want to uh, delete. All right, I think that'll be good uh, for now. We're just gonna check it right there. You'll see that vignetting still, but just just bear with me. We'll, we'll uh, get that out of there. So we're gonna go over here, right click on the background and press duplicate, duplicate uh, layer and that creates a copy of the background. And then Control C or right click and copy as well. And we're gonna go over here, File, New, Image from Clipboard here, and it's gonna open up a new tab called Untitled, Untitled, and Control V or right click copy. And here we go. All right, so this is where the interesting part begins. We're gonna go over here and go to Healing Brush and select just like a normal part of the sky. Like that looks like very normal, less stars. And yes, I'm going to erase 
the galaxy. You probably think I'm crazy right now, which maybe I am, but just bear with me. There's a reason we're doing this. So we're, this is going to create like basically um, a, a calibration frame to remove the uh, light pollution and everything and these like vignetting places out of the background. So again, we're going to do it over here as well um, for Bode's Galaxy. Over here we already did Cigar Galaxy. It was easier. Bode's a little bit harder because it's bigger. But yeah, remove all the details from, yes, we just erased our whole picture. Ah, what did I do? I just destroyed everything. But uh, you'll, you'll see the end result and understand why. Um, so just bear with me. I promise I'm not crazy. Let's make sure you want that to look as close to the rest of the background as possible. And if you have any really bright stars, you can do that with the healing brush too and get those out of there as well. Um, but I think we're... We're pretty good. I'm just showing a little bit of a glow there still, but I think it, I think it should be pretty close. Um, so anyway, next we go up here after we've erased our image, right? And we go to noise and dust and scratches. And we're going to create um, this like kind of blurred out view of it. I just usually leave it on 140 pixels. It seems to work all right. Press OK. And that's going to process that piece so basically we're creating like a, a background without our image and we're gonna I'll show you in a second after this process is we're gonna subtract that gradient if you will from our main image here and it's gonna leave it a lot darker and take the rest of that light pollution out so it's a great way to remove light pollution and the gradients in there so we have a lot of gradients as you can see so I'm gonna come over here after that processes and go to image and then apply image and so, oh, you see, wow, that, that, but we just erased a lot of our info. So it, it, it defaults to merging the two together. You don't want to do that. We want to go to Entitle, Untitled here, the one we just created. And the piece we want to do is uh, not multiply, it's subtraction. So you can see there's all these different pieces. So we're going to go to Subtraction. See how much better the subtraction, subtracted background looks? And it's amazing, right? So that's the subtracted background. And... So I'm going to show you like the, the differences here. So I'm going to press subtract and you can play with the offset. I, I found that 20 or 25 usually is good. Um, you can go higher if you feel like you're, you're deleting too much of your detail. You can go like 35, but I just feel like it lightens it up a little bit much sometimes on those. And you don't want to go too low because if you go like three, we just lost all of our detail, right? So um, just find out what works in here on the, on the offset piece. Um, 33 looks, I mean, 30 looks pretty good. Uh, 25, I think, is what I'm probably going to stick with. I think 25 looks, I mean, maybe even 28. Let's see what 28 looks like. Uh, I don't see a huge difference, right? So I think I might just stick with 25. I think that looks pretty, pretty good. Um, let's see the difference between 30 one more time. Yeah, why don't we hit the middle here and just say 27. There we go, just some random number, right? So, I'm gonna press OK there. And so if you go up to your edit and undo, apply image, you can see that was what we started out with before, and edit, redo, that's what we have now. So, I mean, it's a pretty big pretty big difference if you ask me. Um, let's do it one more time just so you see the differences. So you're taking that all the vignetting out of there and the gradient out of there. So now we have this like nice flat black background. Other than that, like I only do like a few more tweaks here. Uh, just very small tweaks. I'll mess around and see if the contrast and the brightness uh, looks a little bit better, right? You can kind of look, mm, which one do I like better? Sure, that looks pretty good, right? Maybe move the contrast up a little bit. Makes the background darker, right? So just whatever you guys want to do. Um, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, sometimes I go in here and I'll adjust uh, the vibrance as well just to give it a little bit more color if I'm going for more like more saturated. I won't move the saturation up too much because that's pretty powerful but you can kind of see the difference between the two here. Yeah so I think that looks all right. I might bump the vibrance up a tiny bit more. Let's go with I like the look of that. 
And every once in a while, I'll go over here, and here's another, another trick for y'all. The hue and saturation. So there's not very many greens in space. There's some exceptions. You'll see some green in, in some of the nebula, like Monkey Head Nebula has a little bit of green in it, and uh, Orion, just off the top of my head. But um, most things in space don't have a lot of green. So if you're seeing a lot of weird green kind of look in your pictures, you can reduce the saturation here and, and take out a lot of that green that you're seeing. I'm not really seeing that much of a difference in mine. I mean, we can zoom in too to see if we're seeing much here, much of a difference. Let's go to where it was. Yeah. Yeah, it's not gonna make a huge difference here. I'm gonna set it just like a 40, just take it down a little bit. But yeah, that's another thing you can do if you're getting a lot of weird noise. Um, it's a way to take out some of that noise without making it too um, like soft looking, if you will. You don't want to soften the whole image, but taking out the green a lot of times uh, helps with that. And I actually learned that from Nebula Photos as well. So check that one out. It's a good one. Um, so here we go. I, this is you know, a pretty decent image. I'm going to go ahead and, and save it um, to save a copy and as you know, a TIFF file. And we're going to call this copy and then edited. So we have one more step that I'm going to take you through here today. And save that. Yeah, I don't care if layers are going to increase the size. That's fine. Um, all right, cool. So we're saved there. Um, just going to minimize that, minimize that. And now we're actually going to go to the final step, which is in Pix, uh, PixInsight. And so. I just actually started using PixInsight recently. Uh, I, I'm by no means an expert in PixInsight, uh, so I might do a whole tutorial later, and I know you can do all of this stuff in PixInsight. I know everyone's gonna say, oh, why don't you just do it all in PixInsight? I haven't learned it all yet. I'm comfortable with this process, and listen, I uh, create some pretty damn good pictures without using just everything in PixInsight, so I'm comfortable with how I'm doing it right now. Will I change it at some point down the line? Maybe, but this is what works for me right now. So I'm gonna go in here and this is kind of just the final steps. We're gonna open up the picture we just edited in uh, Photoshop, right? So just let's just type in M81 again. Look for that. And we're looking for the no light pollution edited uh, photo that we just did. So let's look for that. Here it is. So we're gonna open that up in PixInsight and uh, I always drag it down here in the middle of the screen a little bit. All right, so what are we gonna do now? We're gonna do, this is one of my favorite pieces I started adding to my editing process recently. So we go to the processes and uh, deconvolution and then the blur exterminator. And before we do that, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see, whenever you zoom in really close on an image, it, it's blurry looking a little bit, right? So we're gonna come here and um, let's see, I think we'll frame it up about like that of the uh, of Bode's galaxy there. And we're going to run this. Now this is going to take a little bit of time, not, not too long. And basically that's going to take away some of the blur. It's going to bring out some more of the detail of the uh, galaxy. And it's going to make the stars look a little bit better too. It's going to crunch them down a little bit and just make them look a lot clearer and rounder. This, this is a game changer, I'll tell you. Now, none of this stuff, I would say, is cheap. And if you're just doing it, like, uh, for fun, you know, just every once in a while, I don't think this is, like, truly needed, per se. Um, but this really will add, like, an extra pop to your, to your images. And it's really kind of uh, added that something special to, to the images that I've been editing. And I swear by it now. Now it is an add-on, like I said, PixInsight's, pretty expensive itself. Um, I'm actually on a, a trial right now that expires in 12 days. I've only been doing this for about two weeks now on, on this final step. And yeah, between APP was like, I think 150 or so. And then PixInsight is, I think it's in the 200s or something. So I am going to buy it. I wanted to do, but you can do a trial. Like I think I've been in a, a 45 day trial with this. And then you do uh, you can do a trial of the blur exterminator that I'm doing, and then also something else you're going to see is the noise exterminator as well, which just removes all those little hot pixels and everything else, the little uh, noise that you get um, from, from doing long exposure uh, photos, and just makes the photo a lot clearer um, without losing the, the details of the photo, if you will. So 
bear with me for one second and we'll get this um, the process I want you to to see like right when it changes over so I'm not gonna go off here yet it does take a little bit and it might take a little bit more time or less time depending on the uh, the power of your equipment that you're using um, for this processing I always thought this is kind of cool here it's like this double uh, star here that's really close I'm not sure what those two are called but they look like they're uh, gonna be merging soon or something because those are really close to each other so we can i don't know if i can look at the image right now now but i think we got some pretty good detail in here and i think we're gonna uncover even more after this gets done processing and the the blur exterminator always takes a little bit more time than the uh than the noise exterminator so just uh bear with it for some yeah, and I think in the next video, I think I'm going to cover um, how we process the, um, how you process planet photos, or videos, I should say, because if you're doing it right, you're doing a video, um, taking a lot of different frames and uh, kind of removing that noise that you get from being zoomed in so close and stuff on, on from the atmosphere. So, loading up here, got about 30% more to go. Just gonna see the difference here. Oh, well, don't do that apparently. <laughs> I did have never tried to click and move it before, but I guess it doesn't like that while it's trying to process. All right, well, that's not optimal, but we'll see if it still shows us like the difference there all right almost there about 93 percent If you all can see the difference there, but yeah, a lot more detail. It's a lot smoother. Um, removed all that blur that was in the image. You can really zoom down into it now. Um, let's see if I can give you a you know, before and after example. Edit. I, yeah, I can undo it. Let's see if it lets me do this. Ever tried to do that before? Okay, let's undo it. All right, see, that's what it was before. Now let's redo it after before see how it's kind of blurry there and after and see how much more detail we get so it just clears up the the middle more kind of crunches down the stars and highlights the detail in here so let's go over to um, the cigar galaxy as well and we'll do the same thing so what it looked like before see how it's really blurry right not really blurry, but just slightly blurry when you're zoomed in this far. And then, boom, look at that. Just really clears everything up. Makes those stars look a little bit better. So, like I said, this is a game changer, in my opinion. All right. So, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to stay on the Cigar Galaxy this time with the noise exterminator, which we really don't have much noise. But, there's, see, there's a little bit of noise, right? Um, so, let's go in here and zoom in pretty close and then do the... Uh, go to processing process and then uh, noise reduction and it's noise exterminator and this doesn't take nearly as long so you won't have to wait as long and listen to me talk about nonsensical stuff so all right let's run this and it should populate pretty quickly oh yeah we're cruising through a lot faster than um, blur exterminator so this uses like AI to calculate like the total image and everything it's dealing with, and, but it's specifically for deep sky images. Um, so it, you can't use like something. There's other things out there that like do this for normal pictures of like people or landscapes, but this is specifically for deep sky photos, which makes a huge difference. So oh, we're almost done. Always like watching the difference here. Oh yeah. So that maybe you know made it a little bit clearer. If you zoom in all the way now, we don't have those little pixels like we we're seeing before. So it definitely made it 
a little bit sharper, removes a lot of that noise. So now, I mean, we have a pretty good picture look in here. Um, now, I would say like this is pretty much uh, the extent of it. Uh, every once in a while, I'll go into Lightroom and do a few tweaks here and there. A lot of times, I just do it. Um, sometimes, sometimes I just do it on my phone. Like they have Lightroom on your phone, or I do have Lightroom on the desktop as well. But for now, I think we're going to end it here. This video has been long enough. Uh, but that is how I go through the processing of my images, starting out from viewing them to make sure everything looks like it's in order, um, all the guiding look good, deleting the ones that don't look good, to going to uh, the stacking process in Astro Pixel Processor, APP, and then moving on to Photoshop and removing the gradients there and doing a few tweaks here and there, and then doing the blur and noise exterminator in um, PixInsight. Now, I know you can do all this in PixInsight and a lot more. This is what I do, this is what I'm comfortable with, and I just wanted to bring this all to you. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you get a lot out of it. And remember to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment uh, how you maybe process things as well. And then stay tuned for next time because I'm going to post something about how to process planetary images and videos as well. So thanks you all. Take care. Welcome back to my channel. This is Cody, the Astro Adventurer, and I'm going to take you through a tutorial today of how to process uh, planetary or moon images, very similar. Uh, we're going to do a moon image today. I uh, just got a new camera, the SI678MC, and I was testing out on moon and then Mars. I'll probably do a follow-up one on Mars, but we're going to start out with the moon today. And if you're using a Mac, it will be a little bit different. You're probably going to use Cyril uh, to do this process, but uh, I'm using a Windows PC, so we're going to use pip uh, to convert the files into something that AutoStacker, like a SIR file, or AVI file, will understand. So we're going to start out in uh, pip over here. So just give me a second. I'm going to open that up, and then we're going to um, add in our image file. And I already know where it is. Downloaded it off of uh, iCloud there, and this is the one we want. Uh, no, actually, I'm sorry. This is the one we want um, for the moon image. Yeah, there we go. Open that up. And then I uh, just should be okay with everything. Um, we're looking at a planetary image, um, so that should be fine. Um, well, actually, no, I'm sorry. We're doing a lunar close-up image, yeah, because we don't have the whole... If we had the whole moon in there, then we would probably consider it like a, a planetary one. But since we're doing uh, a really <laughs> close up of the moon there, I was using my C8 so uh, with the new camera, so it was really uh, really close up view there. And we're going to do a solar lunar um, close up video. So go over to do processing, and let's go ahead and start processing uh, the the file there. It might take a little bit of time because this is a pretty big image. So bear with me here, and I'll be back in just a second. All right, I'm back here. I did finish processing, didn't take too long. I wonder if it even told us how long it took. Give me a second, I'm gonna go in here. Um, looks like, yeah, it took 130 seconds. So it's not too bad, this is a pretty big file. It actually takes a lot less time when you're uh, using a file that's a lot smaller. Um, I've seen it take as, as quickly as like 10 or 15 seconds before. So we processed, uh, looks like 2,686 frames and it automatically shows us where it uh, saved the video and opened it up there. It's in the downloads folder. So uh, we should see it in downloads, I believe. Yeah. So it's uh, 2108 underscore 37. Pit file there. So, so we're going to now exit out of here and we're going to go into Auto Stacker. So we're going to load the video that we just did into Auto Stacker, the video we just processed, I should say. So let's open it up here. Um, go to libraries, and uh, we need to go to downloads. There we go. And this should be the one we just did today, I believe. Yes. That is the most recent one, so that should be the one. All right. So it's, there it is. Let's open that. Great. So we have the moon there. 
All right, so now we're going to process this. Um, so basically, we wanted to draw some boxes on here. Um, so you can place, have it automatically place the grid on there for you, um, where, basically where the object is. So we can try that. Let's see if it automatically. Yeah, so we have it automatically on there. We'll see how this goes. I've done this a couple times with the automatic. It doesn't quite work right. So we'll, we'll see how this one, um, how this one works here. And then I think we'll go down here. Yeah, it's not the whole planet, it's the surface. So we need to, okay, yeah, yeah. This one needs to look the surface is gonna do it a little bit differently there. Um, good there. Um, then we have to analyze it. So let it analyze. Shouldn't take too long. And I should mention that auto stacker and PIP that I've been using are both free software. So don't have to pay anything for that. It looks like it automatically detected where the object was. It looks pretty close. Yeah, it just looks, didn't get quite everything up there. Shouldn't be a big deal though. Yeah, looks like we got pretty much everything here, which is great. So as you can see, surface stabilization. So it kind of stabilized it, uh, buffering it a little bit as well. Um, I'm not gonna sharpen it because I'm gonna do that myself later on. And I think we are basically good to go. Um, yeah, place the grid again for the stacking. Yep, good to go there. And now we don't have to do drizzle or anything. I think it should be pretty high quality. It's, I, I did this in full HD, so I think that should be enough. If you do drizzle, if the resolution isn't quite up to stop, stuff, uh, snuff, sorry, um, if it isn't quite high enough. So, all right, let's go ahead and stack this. And I don't think this should take too, too long, although we are doing over 2,000 images, so you never know. And it should just stack the best images that we uh, have out there. So now it's aligning everything. Yeah, this isn't taking too long. So this process isn't too bad. Um, I'll have to do the next one, like I was saying, with uh, Mars. Um, I did take some videos of Mars at the same time I did the moon. Um, they... They turn out okay. I'm, I'm gonna see if they if we're able to process some stuff. Sometimes if it's too small, when I'm putting in there the image, if Mars looks pretty small, it won't um, process it in PIP correctly. Um, so I might have to actually use a different software or just mess around with the settings a little bit. So yeah, we'll do the moon for now. I think a lot of people are are wanting to get into astrophotography. Are usually taking pictures or videos of the moon first. They might be buying uh, planetary cameras and planetary cameras are a lot cheaper than like the deep sky, um, you know, cameras that we're, we're using um, for nebula and, and also for galaxies. Like my my net camera I use, the 2600MC Pro ASI, you know, ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro is expensive. It was like 17, you know, actually $1,800. And my planetary camera is one of the brand new planetary cameras, again, by ZW ASI, and it was only $300. So it's a lot easier to, to get into planetary imaging, moon imaging, than it is doing deep sky imaging with, like, uh, deep sky astrophotography with nebula and, and galaxies. So I think a lot of people are also just starting out with the moon. I mean, people take pictures of the moon all the time, even with their cell phones, right? So... Uh, it's much more accessible. We see the moon all the time. Um, so that's why I wanted to start out with kind of a moon processing uh, video. If you're kind of stepping up from maybe you've been using your uh, your phone camera or maybe potentially your DSLR um, to take pictures. And now you've bought a dedicated astronomy camera for planetary camera, if you will, for taking those uh, videos through your telescope. This is the process you would want to use on a Windows PC for doing that. So. Uh, should be stacked pretty soon, I believe. So just give me a few more minutes and we'll see what we come up with. Yeah, we're doing analysis and formation. Yeah, there we go. I think we are all done there. Great. So that should have saved our output file and everything. Yeah, looks like everything is processed, I believe. And we saved it in a TIFF. A tip file as well. So uh, stay tuned and we'll open it up in uh, Photoshop in just a second and go from there. And here are the pictures after I've edited them in Photoshop. So I have a couple different versions here. 
I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for joining, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey everyone, it's Cody, the Astro Adventurer, and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a really good tutorial lined up for you. There's been a lot of videos coming out there with this zoom in effect of pictures that were taken in astrophotography where you kind of have the stars going past you and you're almost like warping into the nebula or galaxy. And um, when I first learned how to do this, there was a lot of confusion of like, how do you actually do it? Um, there wasn't a lot out there. There's still not a whole lot out there. Some people are just like doing it, not really telling people how they're doing it. So. Um, I kind of pieced together some YouTube videos on my end of, of uh, some different ways to do it. So I wanted to save you all the time and just put out a quick tutorial on how to actually do that zoom in effect uh, that looks like you're kind of warping into the, the uh, nebula or the galaxy or whatever it might be. Um, so this is how I do it. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it, but I'm... Uh, looking forward to kind of showing you the easiest way that I found. Now it does require you to have some certain software, um, mainly Adobe After Effects is what I found uh, works the best. Um, so without further ado, let's jump in and I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's go in here first and we'll open up um, Adobe and just get in there, give it a second, it might take a little bit to load. Uh, but this is uh, actually a super easy process once you uh, figure it out. Uh, I can get it down to doing it within like a, a, a few minutes now. Um, it does take a little while to render the video, so that takes a little bit of time obviously. But All right, we have After Effects open here as you can see. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and click on New Project. And once we click on New Project, we're going to go New com uh, Composition from Footage. So we're not creating a completely new composition. We already have the picture in there, hopefully, right? So uh, I'm going to click this button. And so that's going to take me to, um, actually, it's I think it's already on my default folder where I, I keep all of my uh, finished astrophotography pictures in here. And the one that I want to do today is going to be uh, Andromeda. And I haven't done a zoom in effect on Andromeda before. So here you see there's all my... <laughs> Not all of them, but most of my astrophotography pictures in here. So this is the last one I did of Andromeda pretty recently. So um, I think this is the one we need. So I'm going to go ahead and um, open it up. Import, you see right here. It shouldn't take too long. Boom, there we go. There's Andromeda. So what we're going to do next is go up to um, this layer button right here at the top and press new and whoops sorry new and then we're going to create a solid layer it's kind of creating just a, another layer on top of the picture and I always click this make uh, comp, uh, like comp size right here too to make it the same size as the picture and you want to keep it on white and the defaults white so you shouldn't have to change it there I always keep it on white so press ok and like oh no we just uh, messed up the picture here right well that's what it's supposed to do, so don't worry. <laughs> that happens every time. So the next step we go up here, we click on Effect, and then go down to uh, Simulation, and then CC Starburst. Now, once you do this a couple times, it will be already up at the top under Effects. You'll see it right there. It's, it's one of my favorites. But you know, before you've done this before, it won't be up there. CC Starburst right there. So click on that, and oh, there's my picture back again. But man, does it look like a bunch of stars, right? So. <laughs> Uh, you will have to edit the settings over here. Um, the default ones I've never found works way too many. So you're actually adding like a star field there um, in the background. So yeah, you're kind of adding fake stars, but you know, you can't make the, the still stars in your picture really move, but um, it gives that effect that it is, right? And they're, uh, you want to make them as close to the same size as most of the stars in your picture. Okay, so we'll come in here and we'll click on scatter. Um, for me, what I found with most of, most of my pictures is that 600 for scatter works really well. So see how, boom, right there, it just looks a lot better already. And we removed a lot of that clutter. I don't know why you want like any more than that, to be honest with you. And then the speed, you don't want to keep it at one because it, watch, if I click the space bar and we get this one, it'll be like way too fast. So, um, whoop, I put the seed. So right, let's put one on there again, and let's check out to see what the speed. See how it's way too fast. Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely warp, but that's a little bit too fast, right? So, 
you want to make it look a little bit more believable, right? So come in here to speed. What I found works really well is um, 0.035. It says it rounds up to four. Maybe it does. Maybe just put 0.04, right? So now when I press play, see how the stars are moving a lot more slowly, right? I think that looks a lot better visually, right? So I'm going to stop that. And then we're going to go, the only other thing I usually change is the size sometimes. I mean, right now, I think we look, we look pretty good. What I usually settle on for most of my pictures is um, 112. I know it seems random, but it seems to work a little bit better at that size. It looks better. Sometimes I find if it's much less than that, the, the stars just look too small. More than that, the stars look too big and uh, bulky, right? That doesn't look right with the, um, the photo. So now that we've got that all figured out, uh, really there's not a whole lot left to do. Um, I'm going to move this back to the beginning. We'll come down here, click on the picture here. And what we're going to do, we're going to press the S button on the uh, keyboard once we have our picture clicked. And you'll see this thing called scale comes up. And the, the other thing we're going to press is shift P. And that's the position we are in the, uh, basically in the picture, right? So the scale and the picture, uh, position, sorry. So you're going to need both of these um, to uh, do the zoom in effect that we want to do. You want to also click this little stopwatch area here that controls it for the time so that's what's going to give you that progressive zoom over the time of the video so um, that you always have to click that make sure the time thing here is in blue so again we click on the, the Andromeda picture down here we press S and then we press shift P and then that gives you position and scale and then click the little time button here so what I found works really well for most of my pictures, and I take the little slider here, you see the stars go back and forth as we go here, and I move it all the way to the edge. I found that 200% zoom works pretty well. I've done a little bit more, I've done a little bit less, but 200 usually works out really well. So there's our zoom right here. Never tried to do a zoom in on the Andromeda Galaxy before, but um, hey, we'll see how it looks, right? It's fun to experiment with things like that. So as you can see, we're getting that zoom in effect now. So it's kind of taking a while to load here. If I would press like the space bar, here we go, now it's loading. See how it's just, now we've got our zoom in effect. It's progressively zooming in slowly over the course of 30 seconds. That's what it defaults as, 30 seconds. I think you can change it, of course. Um, you might want to use 60 seconds. I've been thinking about maybe pushing to 60 seconds, but it really looks good at that 200% zoom for most of the uh, pictures that I take over the course of, of 30 seconds and with the settings that I have on the, the starburst and like all that, right? So, right, that's almost it. The only thing you have to do now, I'm going to stop this really quickly, is you go into composition and you go to add to render queue. Click that. And then we come down here. I use an iPhone, that's usually what I'm uploading these from. Um, if you're just doing it from your computer, you can use different um, settings that maybe are a little higher quality. You can use like dot .move or, or whatever it might be. Um, but come in here and what I do is uh, match render quality settings at 40 megabytes per second for H.264. Uh, and then that'll put it into an MP4 file, which is readable by pretty much anything. And then you click, sorry, let's go back. So once we click that, we click where it says output to, and see how it says not specify yet? This is where it's gonna save your, uh, your render. So your render is like, it takes the picture, it adds the star field effect with all the stars, and then it adds the zoom effect as well where the stars are going by and you're getting closer to the galaxy nebula, whatever you're doing this for. Um, you know, you can do this for all other pictures as well. It doesn't have to be astrophotography pictures. This is just the type of pictures I take, so that's what I use it for, right? So. Go in here, click on that, and I already have mine saved in a folder that's After Effects Finish Renders. And then all you're going to do is press Save, name it what you want. Um, I think we'll probably call this right Andromeda Zoom Effect. That's it. So we're going to press uh, Save, and then only thing left to do is to press render. I'm going to press render here. And depending on your computer, this can take a while, um, especially since I think we're using a pretty high quality TIFF file that's like, 
a couple hundred megabytes, I believe. So as you see, it's starting to render here. I'm gonna go off camera for a second and I'll be back once it's uh, finished rendering. All right, stay tuned. Oh, 10 to 12 minutes for around 10 so that is that's it you know I'm gonna show you the finished product really quickly but uh, that's all it takes I, I like I said once you get this down I mean it might take you maybe three to five minutes of actual work and then uh, the rest of the time is just rendering it and then you can uh, save it on you know your phone send it to your phone whatever post it from from your your computer whatever you're doing it on right so um, I don't really save the, the project here. I said don't save here, and we're just going to exit out of that. And I'm just going to show you the, uh, the finished product, right? So, got in here. We're going to go to uh, After Effects Finished Renders, and there it is. There's the Andromeda one. So, that's our, our uh, finished product there. So, that's all it took. Uh, Look, I hope you really enjoyed uh, this tutorial here. I, like I said, there wasn't a whole lot out there, so I wanted to bring this to you all. So um, I hope you can see how this isn't really that hard of a, 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 pro, a, a project to take on and to do. So try it out on your own. Take some pictures. It doesn't have to be astrophotography. photography. It could be any kind of photography that you want to give that neat zoom in effect on. And uh, let me know in the comments uh, if you do it a different way or if you like the way I showed you to do it. And I'm uh, looking forward to bringing some more videos like this to you all. Would love to hear in the comments um, what else you would like to see. But um, again, thank you for joining and don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Take, take care. Bye.